Mindset Podcast. And now, your host, Jake Naraki. What is going on, Reset Nation? Welcome back to another episode of Operation Self Reset. My name is Jacob Naraki, and I'm here to get you on track towards success, your own personal reset coach. That's what I'm going to call myself from now on. I'm your reset coach. So when things go wrong, when you said that bad thing in that meeting, when you realize your health is poor, you realize you feel like life is coming down on you, I am here to let you know that you are just one step away from pressing that reset button on your own personal life to get yourself in action to accomplish the goals and tasks and become personally successful in your own life. With that being said, today's episode is about athletics. We actually have a gentleman called, or he's not called, his name is Scott Jones, and he has a podcast called um, Athlete on Fire. Really interesting. It really breaks down the mindset of these athletes. But before we get into that interview, I want to talk to you guys about my own athletics experience recently. I actually pulled my hamstring. And I don't know if you guys have ever pulled something, but the hamstring muscle, for some other reason, wow, it will really take, I mean, it will take you down hard. And I haven't been able to run, I couldn't do Insanity or any of those programs, I've been limited to movement, and I really feel crippled for just pulling a hamstring in my left, um, my left hamstring muscle, we'll go with. So, so to get this healed up and to get this, you know, my body back in order, I went to the chiropractor, which I do on a monthly basis, and I also saw a, um, I got a massage, deep t- tissue massage, but that really didn't get it. So I decided to, you know, start looking online and how to stretch properly the hamstring. And long story short, you know, they now what's very popular is the foam rollers. You know, you can take a softball, a, you know, a basketball or a ball of some sort and kind of roll on it, roll on your, your muscles and it kind of breaks open the muscle fibers to allow fresh blood to get in there and heal the ligaments or the irritation. So I did that and it did it work. Sure. But the thing that really kind of helped me uh, progress was I bought those Vibram shoes. You know, they're like the, 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 I think they're also known as like the finger toe shoes. And basically there's no sole. I mean, it's like a two millimeter rubber pad you're, you're walking on and it's basically you're walking barefoot, but you have this protector protective layer. And I've been walking in them for the last week and I give my dog two walks a day. I work out in them and I try to wear them as much as I could. And honestly, that really relieved the pain. And I think what associated with um, wearing these shoes, it had just allowed my body to be have a solid foundation, kind of get back to that ergonomic walking as opposed to these big shoes, you know, the Nikes or the Asics that have the huge comfort and the cushioning support, you know, that kind of throws off your joints and the, the way that we're naturally built um, as humans. And I realized that really helped me. I have no affiliation to the Vibram shoes or anything like that or the finger toe shoes or whatever you want to call them, but that really helped. So now you know my ailments. And you know what I did to fix it. So I don't know. Take it for a grain of salt. I just wanted to give you my little problem and how I got through it. I don't know why. Again, random thoughts passing through my head. But anyway, let's get into the content of today's show. So we have Scott Jones on. But like any time, he's a guy that hosts his own podcast. He has three kids Two or three kids. I cannot recall offhand. But he is a very active individual. He sets up races around the country. And like myself, I'm a busy guy, full-time job, family to attend to, other things on the side. And there are moments in our lives, and I'm speaking to you now, mano y mano, there's going to be times in your own personal life you just feel worn out. You don't feel like doing it. You don't feel like doing the right thing for yourself, either health-wise, fitness-wise, education-wise, getting up and doing that thing that you sh- you know you should do or complete for your job, work, family, what have you. And there's a quote that I came across that was pretty interesting. And I know I've kind of broken away from the quote of the day just because some of the quotes can kind of get ridiculous and redundant. And also, too, I realized... I didn't know what to say after the quote. It would be like this really inspiring quote. And I'd be like, okay, that was the quote. Hmm? Take it. Use it. You know, I didn't know what to say. So that's why I kind of dropped it and, and what have you. So this quote, though, I think really hits home uh, for everybody, every single person that has anything going on, which if you are listening to this, you probably have a lot of things going on. And it goes like this. Those who only do what they feel like don't do much. To be successful, you must take action even when you don't feel like it, knowing that the action itself will produce the motivation you need to follow through. 
And I think that quote is really, really true. I mean, that first part there, those who only do what they feel like don't do much. And that's very true. I mean, truly, who here likes eating a salad for dinner? Who here likes to get up early and work out? Who here likes not hitting the snooze button? Who here likes reading a book instead of watching a movie? Truly, I don't. a lot of people, I know yourself included, we don't like to do a lot of things. But if we do the things that we don't like to do, we can really become successful. So with that being said, let's dive into the podcast episode with Scott Jones from Athlete on Fire. We'll catch you on the backside of this interview. Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, today we got an awesome guest on. His name is Scott Jones. He is from Athlete on Fire, and uh, he has a podcast. Met him in New Media Expo out in Las Vegas, See, and that's why I tell you guys, get on outside, mingle with other people, because you never know who you're going to run into. Scott and I have been chatting, and uh, he has some great insight on what athletes do to prepare themselves, and we're going to kind of transform it into... To, to you guys a little bit about how to transform your life and learning from the professionals. Scotty, man, thank you so much for coming on. Yeah, man, I'm excited. Awesome. Hey, you know what? Nobody knows really what you're about, who you are laid on us. Who are you? Are, are you saying that nobody knows me? Oh, that's yeah, great. Right. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm sorry I couldn't have a better name than Scott Jones for your show today. That's all right. But yeah, I'll just tell you what do you want just a quick quick yeah uh, clip yeah you know version? like um yeah how did you get to athlete on fire you know how did you get into because i know you do a lot of things related to sports i guess we can kind of kind of start there yeah sure so uh, you know i i live in uh, beautiful colorado i've been out here for about 10 years and me and my wife we both have our degree in, in exercise science and nutrition my, my master's is in exercise physiology I've been training athletes my whole career. I played college baseball. I come from a competitive family. My dad played college football. Uh, and I've just had, I've always been a competitive guy. Like I just want to play all the time, you know? Sure. And uh, so we've started a handful of businesses that have to do with, with health and fitness and really just a mission statement of getting people to move uh, without boring them to death, to be honest with you. So we've started a lot of things. We've done obstacle course fitness in town here before it was popular we we put on 30 or 40 events in the last three or four years we still train we do a lot of outdoor fitness type stuff so we, it, run, it runs a gamut really and uh Nothing. beyond that i've always trained athletes uh for every level uh nfl guys uh nba guys you know nice developmental league you know everything you can think of and there's always you know a lot of endurance guys as well and, and ladies and the stories that come from people that nobody knows about to me are amazing and after kind of diving into this online stuff and really enjoying podcasts myself, I just I thought the platform was perfect to share the stories of all these amazing athletes in the world and really just try to bridge the gap between your elite athlete and your professionals and your everyday athlete. Yeah. So that's that's what I'm doing right now. Yeah, you know, that um, it brings great insight uh, kind of behind the scenes, you know, of what these athletes do to prepare, you know, the regimen, all that stuff. And I think it's really interesting, really cool concept. Um, you know, and also, too, for the people listening, Scott does like the Tough Mudder, the Spartan races, like these big, like kind of obstacle courses, get, you know, kind of like your mission statement is what, get people out to move, did you say? Yeah, well, I mean, me and my wife's personal mission with any of our businesses is just, you know, life's too short for boring events. Let's just get people out there having fun. You know, people who haven't moved before, let's get them moving. Awesome. That's, that's all of it. Awesome. All right. So now let's roll into this, obviously, you know, Operation Self Reset. What have you found out throughout your time? Was there any, like, moment where you went through your own personal lull, you know, was it before starting this business? Was it kind of when you and your wife were thinking of creative ways of getting your life organized? Was there any reset that you guys took to get you are where you are today? You know, as far as the reset is concerned, I, I think while why there hasn't been a huge lull is because we are always resetting. Like we, we, we just are always looking for adventure. We travel a lot. We, we like to bring things that people aren't doing to to the public and and in, in in the professional sense we haven't really found a lull in the personal sense uh the biggest lull that we've had is probably in the last few years we had we have a couple of little guys now yeah and they force you into a different lifestyle no matter how much you want to fight it you, th there is a level of routine that you have to adhere to right. and uh if you don't have kids then maybe it's a job that you fell into whatever it is that's kind of put you into to a routine that you're not used to or that bores you to death, that's what it is. And and we're coming out of that. I mean, really, it's just finding new – you can recreate yourself 
every two or three months physically and mentally if you want to. And for us, that's, you know, signing up for events or even if it's not an event, we're in Colorado. You know, we want to hike the Maroon Bells loop, which is a 27 mile loop. So we'll train for that together and we'll go out as a family and we'll go do something crazy like that that we have to train for. Awesome. And when when you do that, then then everything's got to be firing because, you know, it's not just an everyday thing. Like nobody sets a goal to go walk to the gas station. That's a quarter mile away because you could do that any day of your life. You've got to set goals that are that are big and audacious you know it's just it's huge awesome that's a really good you know and especially there wasn't one event but it's like something that you live by you know it's always you're always resetting you're always changing you're always transforming before we dive into you know what do the professional athletes do to get themselves ready you know and, and kind of things that we can take away you know general um, average weekend Joe's you know what have you found out when you are training these individuals you know um, on a you know, dur- during your professional time, you know, was there something that occurred to you when you're starting to work on these, these, uh, players, you know, was there, was there, um, reoccurring themes with some of the things that were going on with them? Yeah. Well, the first thing is that elite athletes and everyday people that want to get fit and athletic all have the same hangups mentally when it comes to training. And, That might be hitting the wall and not wanting to push themselves hard, or it might be something that has to do with discipline on a day-to-day basis. All the same things that people struggle with, everybody struggles with at every level. So that's that's something I'm I'm learning even more with Athlete on Fire. And it's something that I'm trying to bring out and, and show people like this guy right here has done some amazing things. Yes, he's an elite athlete. But the same hangups that he has, like probably me and you, Jake, have in our everyday life, you know? Right, yeah. So so that's one of the biggest things um, that what, I've seen. What do you suggest, though, like to get past those walls and barriers and stuff like that? Have you found that secret sauce? Have you found that one tip or, or mindset trick that, that really gets you above and beyond? Well, there's no way that there is one trick. Right. And, and the, the good thing about what I'm doing right now, I, I get to talk to some really smart people. And really smart people share share some amazing resources like you're trying to do right now. Right. One of the best quotes was from a, a running guru, and, and his his quote was, um, "We're all an experiment of one." Mm. And and to me, that that answers it for you. There is no one answer. Everybody is different. Everybody's got to try multiple things to find out what works. But at the end of the day, you know, nobody's really going to bail us out. You just you, you got to do the work yourself. Yeah, no doubt. Now, what is it exactly that you do with these professional athletes? As far as training wise, yeah, or on the show? yeah, tra- training wise, training wise. You know, right now I don't have any pr- pros on on the yeah, schedule. Yeah, that's fine. At this that's moment. fine. But but um, but really, it's the same as everything. We I always work backwards. So th- this is probably great for your audience too. Yeah. So if, if your goal is in October uh, to go run a marathon. First of all, we have to find out when is your goal date. So, okay, it's in October. Let's break that down. So we have 10 months to October from right now. Right. Where do you need to be six months out? Where do you need to be four months out? Where do you need to be two months out? Then then we can start working forward with, with those goals. And without getting too specific on the physiology of, of all those goals, we set mental goals as well. And uh, every single athlete that I've talked to uses uses some type of visualization to do really well. So on a daily basis, you're visualizing what that race in October is going to feel like all while you're you're using the the whole idea that compa- compounding efforts are going to lead to a really good race day. Hmm. And those compounding efforts are just your day-to-day discipline and, and training. Now, do you feel the way that you broke down your outlook? So we got a race in October, but let's say it's a life goal. Like let's say if it's a, a change of job or something, do you feel that you should have these check marks prior to that big goal next October? Do you feel that life and training for an event is kind of one of the same when it comes to planning uh, your life? You know, I, it depends on what it is. I mean, wh- yeah. what, what if your goal is to just find joy in every day? You know, right. that, that's a simple mental process. But if your goal is to run 26 miles and you can't run 10, then that check if you don't check off the 10 mark, then 26 is not going to happen. You know right. what I mean? Right. So it just depends on... It depends on on so many different factors, you know? Yeah. Now, let's go into Athlete on Fire. You know, it, it's something that's very near and dear to your heart. It's something that you find, you know, you just love talking to these, you know, A-level professional athletes and and trying to scrape their brain and find the the, t- the tricks and the tools and the mindset that they use to get themselves to that next level. Um, 
if you wouldn't mind just giving us a brief overview of what you do on the podcast and then also too like how are some of the the answers you know that they give you the athletes inspire yourself to to help you know the average joe when it comes to physical fitness or or training for some type of event okay yeah so i'll take a couple minutes so athlete on fire you know when i first started i didn't really know what the end product should be or would be. I just knew that there was a lot of good stories out there that need, needed to be shared. Uh, having an expertise in the science piece behind exercise and fitness certainly helped, and it's helped me a lot during these interviews. But what I've come to learn is that it's really bridging the gap. You know, it's bridging the gap between everyday people and other elites as well, and trying to find, allowing people to pick and choose what formula they need to use to get to their goals, whether they're physical or mental. And that's, that's where, where I've come in the last few months. Now, is everybody, is everybody going to be able to listen to an ultra runner and, and bring something from that? Maybe not, but, but my experience has been that everybody has something to, to, to relate to. So the, the big goal is to, to tie everybody together. So with the show, I have three types of athletes. Okay. First is an elite or a professional or an ex elite and professional. The second is just like an inspiring athlete. So like, I, I had an athlete who lost use of her legs in a bad cycling accident, and she went on to, to be the first woman to complete an Ironman with, uh, without use of her legs. Just wow. an amazing story. Uh, so those are your like inspirational, overcoming things type of story. And then the third type of athlete are just everyday people like you and me that use athletics or fitness or being active as a backdrop to their success and what they do. And I didn't think I'd enjoy that type of athlete as much, but sure. the, it's it's quickly becoming my favorite interview because there's so many different ways that we can go with that. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, that's that's kind of a, a quick a quick uh, synopsis for you. Sure. Now, let's like talk about the reoccurring themes from professional to average. What are the couple of key points that keep on coming up? Um, you know, not only to like training for an event, like setting out the plan and everything like that and eating, but like what are some tips and tricks and, and kind of fundamental steps that everybody is util- utilizing, utilizing, if I can say it right, but nobody <laughs> feels that they need to bring it up and talk about? Well, th- it's actually a question I asked. So I, I asked a couple questions in a row. And the first one is like, what is a goofy, superstitious ritual that, that you do before you compete? And I follow up with, tell me a habit that you have that you really feel contributes to your success as an athlete or a business person or whatever. And when we, when we speak to habit, there, there's been a few reoccurring themes. We're not getting a lot of variety here. Right. And, and the first one is habit. It's ritual and it's discipline and doing the same thing every day the same way so that you can have an amazing outcome. Hmm. Uh, that's something I've struggled with uh, in the past with my own businesses and stuff. And, and I've really been able to stay focused with, with athlete on fire because of, because of my guests, to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, secondly, one of the more resounding themes is visualization and meditation. Mm-hmm. Really successful people are doing both or one of these on a regular basis. It doesn't matter if you're speaking in front of a big crowd, if you have to give a presentation at work or if you're, going to compete in, in a big basketball game or, or a wrestling match or a run. Visualization is huge. And, and a lot of our athletes break it down. Every single athlete and every single person I've talked to breaks it down in a different way. But just understanding that it's an important way to, to really reach your goals is important. So the, the, those are the two resounding ones, I'd say. So let's talk about habit for a second. You know, habit sounds like it really keeps you structured, you know, but a lot of people might be thinking, well, habit's great. And you know what? Americans, the world, the human race is built on habit. You know, we we like taking the same way to and from work, to and from a facility. We like those, you know, the same type of clothes depending on what we're doing. You know what I mean? We we enjoy habit. But do you feel sometimes habit can kind of get you in a lull, you know, almost make you too comfortable? Yes or no? For me, absolutely. I the way I define habit for myself is getting certain things done every day. Okay. It's not necessarily that I have to get them done at 4 a.m. or 4 p.m. Uh, or see. whatever. Okay, right. You have like so, your checkpoints. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, okay, okay. <laughs> and then second of all, with the visualization, I'm a big believer in it. I've talked about it a couple of times about this podcast, and I think it's a huge component. Like you said, it, it doesn't matter if you're an athlete or if you're doing a presentation or just 
trying to do your best in anything. You know, you're just walking through the paces. You know, what is the percentage of people that come on your show or you talk to personally that use visual visualization? Is it, you know, 90%, 80%? What do you, what, I mean, average, you know, what, what would you say it is? Oh, for elite athletes, it's it, I, it, even if they don't know they're visualizing, it's 100% yeah. guaranteed. Yeah. Uh, now, for everybody else who, who's never even been exposed to that or, or knows the terminology, I'd say it's in the high 80s or sure. above. I mean, that's just taking the swing at it. Sure. You know, and the crazy thing is, and I think, you know, it, it, it hits home when people are utilizing the same tools and techniques and, you know, especially when these elite athletes, I mean, they're just regular people like us. You know, they have cool stories. They got interesting stuff. They go through their routines. But if they're using visualization, we're using visualization. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it, it shows that it works. You know what I mean? It shows that this is something that, yeah, maybe you don't believe in it. Yeah, maybe it, it doesn't, you know, you don't see the effects of it. But everybody's us, ut, utilizing it, and everybody's trying to get that edge. And I think that edge really comes through with the visualization. You know, it's it's a very, you know, deep process and it's walking through and stuff like that. What do a lot of people do with the visualization? Do they, do they do it before bed? Do they do it right before they compete? Are they at the starting gate and they, you know, walk through it in their head? Where's the, you know, when, when do you feel people should start visualiza visualization before uh, they come to an event or an obstacle in their life? Well, first of all, I think all of us, me and you included, should visualize saying visualization. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's a brutal word. Oh it is. Gosh. I stumbled like four times too. But honestly, all of the above. I mean, I Joe Decker of Gut Check Fitness, who was a Spartan Death Race winner two years in, in a row, and he he has some amazing insights. Uh, he starts like months and months out of his event. He yeah. imagines, you know, he's doing a lot of endurance stuff. He imagines breaking arms and legs and, you know, what, what it's going to smell like out in the woods and, you wow. know, every detail that you can imagine. And, and I've interviewed some, some Olympians from this past winter Olympics that, uh, you know, 10 minutes before they imagine every, you know, I, I'm speaking to a loser and a bobsledder. Um, they would imagine every single turn on the course, what it's going to feel like where, where their body needs to be. Uh, you know, how they need to stay relaxed. And I've interviewed runners who visualize every single smell that they're going to smell when they're running and how those smells will affect them. And I just got off the line with a woman who's an elite runner, Ariana Hilborn, and she visualizes, like if she has a new mantra that her coach gives her that she looks up or, or a quote that she really likes, she'll practice with that quote running around the tra track during one of her training sessions to see how it makes her feel when she repeats it to herself so she doesn't go out there and try to use something that will throw her off mentally. And it's wow. it's crazy detail, but but there's a million other examples I could give you, but those are just some of them. Yeah, for sure. Let's talk about those um, elite runners. Uh, you and I were talking off mic for a little bit about, you know, I think it applies to a lot of people. I'm not a big runner because I get bored, you know. It's not really active for me. You know, I don't have that stimulation of, you know, different things going on at once. You know, how do those athletes – Stay in the zone for a full marathon or, or, or whatnot. Well, I mean, it's it's different for every fitness level. It is engaging for those guys. And, you know, a lot of it's personality, people who enjoy certain things. That's why some people wrestle and some people play lacrosse. You know, it's just a personal preference. As it pertains to running for an everyday person, I think it's a matter of putting yourself in a different state of mind. I mean, if, if you, Jake, hate running – then you need to put yourself somewhere else where the stimulus is different. You know, go find a single track trail where there's a lot of roots and rocks where it's more athletic, where you are engaged or else you'd break your freaking leg, you know? Yeah, I see. Um, so just finding a way to put yourself in a different state of mind if you really want to get to a point where you could enjoy it. Yeah, that's good, man. That's really good. Um, let's break it down a little farther now. So we got the, the, the mental aspect of becoming an elite athlete. And for maybe the people that are beginning from step one, literally, you know, maybe they want to start, they know that you need to lose a couple of pounds before they get going in some type of athletics. Do you have any tips or, or, or suggestions of what the people that have come on your show suggest for when it comes to eating habits from, for, you know, things that they're doing to keep their body always metabolizing, you know, what, what are some of those, I don't want to say secrets because there's no real big secret when it comes to losing weight or, or starting a new healthy lifestyle, but are there anything that you can share with us that is, that would be eye, you know, eye popping? Well, I, I mean, first of all, people have to make the decision for themselves. And if, if you're thinking, I mean, we'll, we'll use an extreme case. You know, 
everybody knows that an addict, uh, they need to decide that they want to quit whatever they're addicted to. You, right. you can't force an addict to quit. They, they won't, it won't happen. Um, once they make the decision, that's a different story. I, I tell people all the time, when, once you're five years old, you pretty much have a good idea of, of what eating healthy looks like, whether or not you want to do it or not. So for weight loss and speaking to that, it's, it's really cutting out some bad things and increasing the good things. And I'm, I'm speaking in generalities on purpose because every single person that's listening to this knows that a bunch of green beans is better than a bunch of Twinkies. Okay. What? It's not rocket science. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, set some small goals for yourself. If you drink two Mountain Dews a day, drink one a day for a week, then drink half. Sure. Work yourself out of it. I mean, yeah. give yourself some reasonable give yourself some reasonable goals that you know you can reach and decide how important that goal is for you. And for the fitness piece, I mean, number one, you got to start moving. And the biggest advice I give to people who are just learning how to work out, just understanding how important it is, is you've got to start moving to feel good. You can't wait till you feel good to start moving. And that goes for every single person, elites and morbidly obese people and disease people and everything across the board. You know, and I think that hits home because I interviewed um, a good friend of mine. His name's Jordan Ponder. He's a natural bodybuilder, uh, competes around the country, all that stuff. And, and we're talking about diet and, you know, how to shape pounds. And he goes, you know what? It's not the big changes. It's not the new diet, you know, where you only eat for two hours a day and then you starve yourself for the rest. It's the little changes over, you know, a significant amount of time will create huge results. And you hit it on the head, the Mountain Dew thing, you know, cut it back and then just slowly kind of wean yourself off of it, you know. And yep. um, and again, you know, it, it, I love talking to guys like you and, and other individuals about life and, you know, everything that kind of, you know, goes into the human body. Because we all know the secret. There is no secret. You know what I mean? Like there's no hidden, you know, crazy, you know, eye movement technique to, you know, crave, you know, to, to get over your sweet craving or anything like that. It's just things that you already know you need to do. You just need to do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it, it's, it's crazy. But, um, so let's talk about like, so what's something that you, when you started this podcast and it's really interesting to you, what have you found out about yourself when it comes to athletics? I mean, did you realize a couple of things like, whoa, I, I, I didn't realize about, you know, oh, I'm going to start doing that or, oh, that's interesting. I never figured, you know, thought of it like that. Was there anything like that for you? Yeah. You know, I, I mean, it would probably sound a bit arrogant, but I realized how much I do love what I do. And I, I didn't realize that before because, you can, you know, any career you can kind of fall into monotony. Yeah. And I really, in the last 10 years, I know I've made a difference in individuals the whole time. And uh, that's been very rewarding. But but doing what I'm doing now, I, I'm starting to to hear from people I don't know from around the world. And, and it just reminds me how much I really love, love my career and I love helping people in, in a certain way. And I just hope that I hope that I can do it the right way without turning people off and without being preachy and all that stuff. So that's one thing I learned about myself. And then physically, I just learned that I love competing, man. I, 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 uh, I want to get out there and, and start learning new things. And, you know, I don't know how to ice skate very well. And I live in Colorado. <laughs> nice. I want to learn how to ice skate better. You know, yeah. Like, I don't ever want to stop learning physically and mentally. It's yeah. it's something that I've I've learned over the last few months a lot more. Cool. What um Man, I was going to ask you something. Um when it came to uh, Darn, I had a question. I had a question right off of that. That was going to be really good. Damn it. Well, that's All right, why we uh, have Audacity and GarageBand, baby. Exactly, exactly. Um <laughs> So, okay, so like now you have I'm going to have to edit obviously that out, but so you have two little guys, you know, you are in the the realm of you create these events for people to compete in. It's, you know, it's a weekend activity. It gets the families together and stuff like that. Like, how about yourself when it comes to your family life with raising your kids the, the proper way? You're a huge competitive freak. You love talking to athletes. You love working out. You love everything. You know, you understand the benefits of eating good food to get good out. You know, what are you trying to, are you? You know, pushing your kids in a direction? Are you just letting them learn by by kind of standing back and watching you and your wife do your thing and they're just being involved? Like, how do you feel the right way to raise healthy children? Because as you know, ob obesity is huge in this country. You know, wh what, are, what are you doing that we could replicate to have successful, healthy, um, outgoing children? You know, my, my little dudes are young. I mean, my three-year-old is starting to get it as far as nutrition is concerned. Yeah, my other okay. one's four months. All he does is... is Sorry for the, the audience. All he does is eat boobies and puke all day long. So, 
Um, <laughs> so, so there's not much teaching going on there. Okay. But e- even at that, we make a, a big point to eat together. I think Good. that's huge. And, you know, I, I know a lot of families that do this just from being around people. You know, there shouldn't be two separate meals. There's not a meal for kids that is yes. chicken tenders <laughs> and macaroni and cheese. And then the parents are eating salads over there. Right. Everybody eats the same thing yeah. as much as you can. Trust me, I'm realizing things that I never thought I'd do that are happening. But but as a general rule, lead by example. I think they're going to get it. You know, not too long ago, I was over at some from some friend's house and uh, we had we had some like cucumbers and tomatoes on the side. And 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 our son, Wyatt, was offered something that wasn't wasn't really healthy. And he actually chose the healthy stuff. And me and, Lauren, me and my wife just looked at each other like, oh, it's actually working. Yeah. You know, it's pretty cool. So, oh, for sure. I mean, that's just a little example. There's so many things. I mean, people it's hard. I have a hard time with my, my nutrition, dude. I, you know, I work from home and uh, I I, I, uh, I run all my businesses by myself with my wife. So I, I don't have a huge social uh, deal throughout the day. So I challenge, you know, I'm, I'm at home by myself right now. I could go grab something bad if I wanted to. But right. if I can win most of those battles, then, then I'm going to be healthy over time. Sure. Let's talk about your mindset for a second with the businesses. You know, you know being a... I'll call you entrepreneur. You know, you're moving and shaking. You're creating different events. You're you're have a very creative mind when it comes to um, inner. You know, kind of bringing fitness to the masses. You know, what have you realized when it comes to being creative towards your businesses? You think of a lot of different races. You know, where does that come from? Are you just trying to step outside of the box, see what people want? Are you always talking to people? What do you do to be creative in your business? Well, you know, I think I have a quirky mind and, and a lot of that comes from my, my upbringing. My parents allowed me to be creative. They allowed me to be goofy. Yeah. Uh, I, I have always been in touch with nature. I think that's huge. You, you've got to get out of the literal box, the house and the box that you type on every day and the box that you watch shows on every single day. I mean, everything's a box, you know, you right. got to get out and, and stimulate yourself in a way that's that's not normal and it's not habitual. And for me, it's getting out on a trail, mountain biking, snowboarding, playing ball, and and getting the endorphins kicking. And for some reason, every time I do that, you know, creative ideas just just slap me in the side of the head, and and, and I just go with it from there. Awesome, you know. And I just spoke to somebody that uh, released a book called "Play It Away," and he was so into his work. You know, I mean, he was had anxiety, he was depressed, all these things going on, all these you know health things were were starting to ring off the hook, and he was starting to go downhill fast. And he realized the one thing he was not doing was playing, was getting out and doing things that he enjoyed. And and you hit it on the head. I mean, I was just reading an entrepreneur magazine, uh, Burton. You know, uh, the Burton uh, snowboards. The CEO put in his contract, he has to be on the hillside 100 days out of the year because it allows him to be creative, it lets him to be happier in the workplace, you know, to to be inspired to, you know, change up, you know, the design or whatever. And, uh, you know, what you're doing is is kind of the exact same thing. You're getting out, you're doing things, you're, you're keeping yourself happy, and it's also letting you be creative. It's letting you take different options and stuff like that. Now, when it comes to your business, do you feel that, did you ever feel pressured to kind of go in the mold of, you know, get a college education and then go into the corporate world? Or were you ever in that? And then why did you decide to kind of venture on your own? Uh, you know, I didn't feel the pressure. I came from a long line of college graduates and the biggest pressure for me is I love playing baseball and I had, and I had a scholarship to do that in college. So so yeah, I wanted to go play and and obviously the education was there. My, my entrepreneurial spirit really didn't kick in 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 a formal way until after grad school. You know, I got to grad school. I wanted to be a baseball coach in college. I was at Marshall university. I got a GA with a baseball team and I absolutely hated it. I didn't like the coach. I didn't believe in his (laughs) philosophy. So I was there for two weeks. I was like, you know, this isn't going to work for me. So my degree was still going to be in exercise science because I was interested in it. Sure. And uh, my first job was uh, as sports and performance director for a franchise called the Hit Center. It was basically like the Olympic training center for the public. Nice. And I enjoyed that, but I didn't enjoy the bosses. Sure. Um, I just didn't believe in how they were marketing it because they're having a hard time getting business. So anyway, that's when everything started. I went off and I started a adult recreation league company with some buddies. And I was always personal training and training athletes on the side as my career. Uh, but from there, just like it snowballed. I met my wife on a chairlift. We, st- we've started four or five businesses together. Nice. Just a lot of fun, fun goofy stuff. Some of them were hobby businesses. Some of them were real. And, uh, I just, the, the freedom for me 
it probably started wanting to to go against the man, so to speak, and not have to <laughs> answer to anybody. Sure. But it turned into something much, much more than that. Where if I can if I can wake up in the morning and and decide something's an opportunity and take that opportunity and work my butt off for it, there's no better place in the world. And it, if I can raise kids with that same idea and ideal, then then I'm going to be in a happy happy spot. You know. Well, I think it all comes back to your competitive nature. You know, and I think that uh, you want you want to compete and and like you said, you know, pushing against the man. That's just you wanting to do better. You know, it's just built into you. You know, and yeah. um, for the people uh, listening that don't have that, uh, Scott, do you think? you can build that into your DNA? Oh, absolutely. Right. That That's one of the most trainable things in the world. You know, people need to be given, they need to be empowered, they need to be given confidence. And, it, and if, if you're not in a place where you are empowered or confident, that's fine. You can reach out to people who are. I don't know, Jake, if you ever heard this thing, everybody in business and every entrepreneur has heard this. You, you're you the average of your five closest oh, friends. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Everybody's heard it, right? Right. So, if the aver- if your average five friends are you know morbidly obese and have the worst eating ha- habits in the world, then then maybe you need to find some people that have some better knowledge or some better habits that you can surround yourself with. That's the biggest thing. I, and I think just people realizing that their their micro environment isn't healthy is the first thing they can do. And that's that's not even trainable. That's actionable. You know. Yeah. Uh, we're running out of time, but I got two questions left for you. Number one. A lot of people are sitting at their computer. I sit on my computer all day. I'm editing podcasts. I'm doing stuff online, as are you. From your background, what can you tell the person that goes to work 9 to 5, always sitting at their computer, give us a stretch technique or, or something to do to loosen ourselves up, to get better, you know, back, you know, straight and all that stuff. Anything that you can share with us. All right, so here's one. I actually tell people this all the time. Five tens. First of all, your body does not have to have a cumulative effect of a workout to, to make gains. That means you don't have to go work out for an hour at a time just to make gains. Nice. You can do 12 five-minute sessions and make the same gains uh, in, in a lot of ways. Okay. Yeah. So one of them is every hour do five tens. And you can pick the exercises, but I'll give you five right now. Okay. So you're going to do 10 reps of five exercises. Let's go 10 jumping jacks, 10 push-ups. 10 sit-ups, 10 reverse crunches, and 10 dips. Awesome. Do that every hour. Do that every 40 minutes. Whatever it is, you can change up what those fives are. But that will literally take you about a minute and a half. Everybody can handle a minute and a half just to get their body moving and uh, engage themselves. You know, that's a really good point because I think, you know, you feel that you have to put in an hour to get – the results, but you're right though. The little, uh, they like they say, you know, sprint exercises are just as good as uh, endurance ones. You know, I mean, it it does different, um, enhances different things in your body, and I think uh, breaking it up like that, I think it gets the body moving, the blood flowing. I think that's really good stuff. All right, cool, man. And the last question I got for you: What does a self reset mean for you? Well, self reset for me is like when you're when you're training for something or you find something new that you're interested in, go all in. You know, just dive in so that you almost forget who you were before you dove in for that goal. I wrote a blog a while back, and I'm not a great writer in my opinion, but it's called <laughs> uh, it was called Eat, Sleep, Eat, Sleep, and Breathe. And Mark Cuban on the Shark Tank, I was watching it one day, and, and he's like, I don't want these entrepreneurs who are just doing this as a hobby. I want people who eat, sleep, and breathe their their business. And to me, eating is something that you do a couple, you know, a few times a day. So right. you're there, you're engaged a little bit but you're not all in. Like you don't have to eat 24 seven to be successful. Sleeping, you do that a third of the day. It's still something that you don't have to do the whole day long, but you have to breathe every second of every day. And when you find that business or that passion or that something to train for where you're breathing it all day long, then you know that you're, you're reset. Awesome, dude. That is deep. I like that. Way to break it down. Way to bring in Mark Cuban too. I like that. <laughs> yeah, we're tight, you know. Yeah, all right, perfect. I'll have to. I'll have to get his <laughs> contact from you. Um, Scott, how can people find out about Athlete on Fire and, and all the great things that you guys are doing? Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, you guys, you know me. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, you got. Well, you know, you got a whole team behind you. You and the wife and uh, the kids. So. You know, it is me and my wife. See, she helps perfect. out a lot with with some questions on the interviews. My awesome web designer, Sasha, uh, Sasha Juilliard. Uh, you can find his information on the resources on my page, and I pimp him out like crazy because he's amazing. Yeah, he's and, hooking uh, me up, yeah. Yeah, I think, yeah, you guys hooked up a little bit, yes, so that's going to be yes. really cool to see what he does with you. And and at Athlete on Fire for Twitter and Facebook, uh, athleteonfire.com. 
if you go on athleteonfire.com, there's a little section that has uh, it says athlete workouts. If you click on that, you will find tons of resources for free workouts. There's really extreme ones that our athletes recommend, and then I break them down and modify them for the general public. And what I wanted to say to you, to your audience, Jake, is if if they have any questions on any of the stuff, if they want to get out of a rut or want some unique workout ideas, I I do this for free all the time. Shoot me an email. Tell me that you're serious about it. It's athletesonfire at gmail.com. And I'll, I'll give you at least some ideas that you can take with you. Awesome, Scott. And also, too, when are your podcasts aired? I do I do a Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And the, the big spots are on the website and Stitcher and iTunes. Awesome. Scott, man, well, I appreciate it. Great insight about uh, your life, athlete's life, and um, and just uh, anybody that listen in. I think uh, everybody can gain something from Scott. Man, thank you so much. Appreciate your time, and uh, we'll keep in touch. Thanks a lot, man. See ya. Reset. <laughs> Thanks again to Scott Jones for coming on the Operation Self Reset podcast. I think you guys enjoy that one. You know, it gives you a little different dynamic. It's kind of the first athlete talking about different athletes and their mindsets and things that go on. A really interesting guy, too. Um, I hope you guys get a chance and check out his podcast. It's really cool. He brings on some amazing guests. And a lot of Olympian athletes, especially from the last Winter Olympics, um, are kind of in his library there. Uh, so go, go check him out. And also, too, if you have not checked out my new website design, uh, Sasha, Sasha Juilliard actually hooked me up, and I got that contact through Scott. Head on over to osreset.com, and you can check out my new website design. I think it is awesome. I personally really, really like it. And uh, and if you don't like it, well, it, I, it, I'm sorry. I guess I'm just going to say I'm sorry. And if you're looking for a couple of ways to reset your own personal life, head on over to osrpodcast.com and sign on up to the email list. And I will make sure to send you six high quality PDF files to get your life back on track. It's all about motivation. Um, There's a a little booklet on passion, how to find your passion, how to keep yourself motivated, how to, uh, there's an ebook on different tips of keeping your life in order. Um, A lot of very good detailed organizational tips and ideas to get your life on track. If you're looking for a little bit extra, if you enjoy this podcast, I highly suggest you get over there and go to osrpodcast.com and sign on up. And if you already signed up, thank you very much. I really do appreciate it. And if you notice too, I don't spam people. I only send out emails that are truly worth reading. So no need and don't feel, oh my gosh, I'm going to get bombarded with all this stuff. I'm not going to annoy you. I swear on my hamstring getting healed. (laughs) We'll go with. You guys, again, are truly awesome. If you're interested in doing a 90-day sprint, a 90-day goal plan, email me personally. I'm already working with a couple of clients to get their life and their goals in order. If it's um, business, if it's losing weight, if it's personal issues, if it's just trying to figure out yourself, I can help you with the tools and tips that I have gained over from learning all of these interviews and the people that have come on here, um, spoken to them off mic, and I've gathered a lot of things that I'm implementing into my own business plan. And if you need a little bit extra help, feel free to email me, ask at osreset.com, and we'll go from there. We'll start a conversation. Thanks again, guys, very, very much. I appreciate you guys staying tuned and listening. You guys are very dedicated. This podcast is only getting bigger and bigger. It's truly exploding. I don't even know how people are finding about it anymore, but regardless, thanks. Honestly, it's it's awesome. So uh, to you and your dreams and your ambitions and your success, have a great week. Take care, guys, and we'll catch you next week, Wednesday, for another episode of Operation Self-Reset. <laughs>